Hello folks, Jason Crespin here of JC's Bees. I'm going to continue today on my queen rearing series and today we're going to kind of progress backwards a little bit. If you followed the last video where we added the queen cells to our queenless splits, that's kind of where we left off. Well today, I want to go back a little bit and uh, kind of give you another option. Because you see what can happen is, on the day that you're supposed to make up your queenless splits, it could rain. Um, that happened to me uh, last year. It came the day before I was supposed to make my splits and I'm watching the weather and I'm just shaking my head like three, four days of rain. Great. Um, in my head I'm thinking, wow, if I can't make up my splits, what's going to happen? And here's the rundown of what's going to happen. If you're not able to take that grafting frame out of the cell finisher on the day that it should be split up between your nukes, the very first queen's going to emerge and she's going to go around and destroy every single one of those queen cells leaving you with one queen and that one queen can actually fit through the excluder in your cell finisher and go down and could happen to kill your mated queen in the bottom deep it could make it into a nightmare for you so I'm going to give you some options today and what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you how to set up a banking colony and this banking colony is going to keep you from losing all of your queen cells. It's going to make it so that you can make splits. Maybe not tomorrow when you're supposed to. But once this rain moves on or whatever else has come up in your life that's postponing you from making your splits. Um, once all that moves by, you're able to still go forth. You'll have all your queens. And life is great. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to go into the cell finisher. You want to get your grafting frame. Um, I've made mention of this before, but you do not want to shake your grafting frame. Lay it on its side, use your smoker, smoke the bees off. You're going to set up a queenless colony. Um, if you remember, in my case, I used my cell starter for a split, so they're already queenless. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some capped brood to the uh, cell starter kind of give them a little boost and then I'm going to transfer all of my uh, queen cells into cages. Remove the cells and place them in a queen cage. Cell protector then a queen cage. I'm gonna remove the cell. I'm gonna place it in the cell protector. place it back in here. So I'm going to continue to do this all the way across the frame until I get them all in cell protectors. Okay, so there you can see I've got the whole top row done. Um, I ran out of these wooden cages so I'm going to use hair roller cages now and to do that I've had to make some modifications. Um, what I'm going to do is there's a groove in the top. I'm going to push, push the queen cell up into the groove and then slowly but easily slide these down and around and pop them in. Okay, so as you can see, I've got them all placed and they're ready to be inserted into this banking colony. What I'm going to do now is shake these bees down in. And then we'll insert the grafting frame with the cage or the banking frame excuse me down in there the secret to this is uh, you know your queens are going to hatch out into the cages um, the bees are going to feed these queens because they've got all the food that they need nurse bees that's what they do uh, they take care of the queen they take care of brood 
so you know you've got an ideal situation here so what you want to do is if if this banking colony is going to be used for any more than five six days um, on that sixth day you're going to want to add another frame of brood which means you're going to have to pull a frame um, that's not so much being used so what you may have to do is if you can't find a frame that they're not using so much is maybe transfer it to a deep where you've got more options of which frames to pull. In my case, the five frame nuked worked just fine because I only needed to use it for about five, six days. So I didn't have to add a second batch of brood. But you want to keep that brood cycle going. That way, uh, you know, you've got active brood pheromones within the hive you do not want to create a, a laying worker situation or any of that so what you want to do keep adding that brood and the brood's also going to keep the the banking colony and high population which is what you want to feed all those queens exactly what they need so once your situation has passed like i say we're we're calling it rain in my case um, once it's passed i'm able to go out and make my splits wait 24 hours and then go back to my sell banking colony and take a queen cage with a virgin in it and introduce each one of those instead of a queen cell. So once the queens emerge into the queen cages the first thing I do is I remove the cell protector and replace the cell cup back in the top of the cage. This keeps the queen contained and um, I do not have to worry about her escaping. Some people prefer to stick a marshmallow in there, or one of the small ones, but since I will be releasing the queen later, I find that just to be a waste. So, um, what I do is I take a little bit of crystallized honey, and I use crystallized honey because it's a little bit thicker, and I smear a little bit on the screen of the queen cage. Um, this gives the queen something to eat while she's being introduced to her new queenless split, and uh, it gives the bees in the queenless split something to uh, nibble at while they're being introduced to their new queen. So um, it's been my findings that that seems to help bring the two together and I find acceptance to be a little bit higher. Now it's my experience that I do not wait 24 hours to release the queen from the cage. I go back around and individually release each queen. Um, that does a few things for my notes. I'm able to make sure that they did not kill the queen. Um, I'm actually able to witness her walking out. I can get a better visual look at the queen. And one of the things that I like to look at on my queen is her wings. How beautiful are her wings? Um, I've actually had some queens come out. They've got one normal sized wing and one small wing. What that means, that means uh, that colony's doomed. Um, that queen cannot fly. So if you happen to see that, get rid of her and you're going to have to give that colony another queen. Um, so just little tips like that is going to help you out a lot. Looking for the queen and uh, watching her wings, uh, watching how she moves. Does everything look normal to you? Um, but I wait about, what I like to do is in the morning, I'll go out and introduce all these caged virgins. Um, say 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock. Um, I like to do it before it gets too hot out here. It's already getting that way this morning. See the sweat dripping off my nose here. Um, and then roughly 2, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, go out and just pull the uh, end of the cage off, let the queen out, and uh, hope for the best. A couple days later, I go back around and make sure that uh, there's still a virgin walking around in each one of my splits. I don't expect to see her mated within a couple days, but uh, seeing that she's still walking around on the frames means that they accepted her. So I'll return, you know, a week and a half later or a week to see if she's mated. So I hope this queen rearing series is helping you out a lot, folks. Um, it's not for everybody. It's really not. Um, I know this series kind of makes it seem simple, but it's very complex. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice and you know you got to have your eyes open you got to see what's working and what's not working for you you've got to be able to make changes as you see that they're needed so uh, if you have any questions at all please leave them down in the comments below if you like the video throw me a thumbs up 
That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you click on that little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. And if you would like to support my channel, please check out my affiliate links down in the description below. Um, a lot of people were really curious to where I got my hive tool. Um, that's my favorite hive tool in 10 years of beekeeping. Um, it's made it so that I don't need to carry two hive tools to do the job of one. So if you're interested in that hive tool, check it out to my uh, Amazon store listed below. And thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.